Hi guys! Welcome to Flip, Play, and Learn English. Today, we're going to talk about the basic sentence patterns which are SIV, SLV, SC, STVDO, and STVIODO, and STVDOOC. If you've noticed, I'm now using my DIY pop filter and I hope it works. Let's continue. Why is it really important to study the basic sentence patterns? So let's meet this group of friends who wants to write about a hero's journey. So let's have Aya. Aya has an idea and so she stated it as the hero travels. But Abby thought this sentence sounds incomplete. So she decided to describe the hero's travel. She said the hero's travel is dreamlike. Now for Jed, the hero's journey can be described better using this sentence. The hero faces a world of adventure. And Lian pushed it a bit further by declaring the hero must undergo a series of tests. But then Isagani Having invested much on his vocabulary and sentence structure through voracious reading, thought he can actually combine all ideas in a single sentence. How? He wrote, The hero travels through the dreamlike world of adventure where he must undergo a series of tests. Notice the improvement? And so they wrote more sentences. Aya said the man is old and wise. Abby has a new sentence. The hero considers the old wise man his guardian. Jed has this to share. The old wise man gave the hero the key to conquer his demons. Again, Isagani was able to combine all ideas into since the old wise man gave the hero the key to conquer his demons. He is considered the hero's Guardian. And the squad felt happy about Isagani's sentences because they feel all their ideas got represented. And at that moment, they realized they wanted to be like Isagani, capable of varying sentence style, therefore evoking varied effects and shades of meaning. This way, their sentence will not only be grammatical, but also rhetorical. And so they aspire to be superheroes in sentence writing. So if you want to be superheroes like Isagani, stick with the lesson. And so we begin with the building units. Phrases first before sentence. Phrases. So we have different kinds. We have the noun phrase, adjective phrase, verb phrase. These are the first three that we will focus on. So for the noun phrase, it's composed of the main noun, which is also called the head word, plus the modifier the modifier can come before the head word like in the first sentence the table is made of nara the table this article the is the pre modifier and in the second sentence you have a post modifier barking at the stranger it's a participial phrase that modifies the word the head word the dog the next one is the adjective phrase which consists of the adjective, the main adjective, and its pre-modifiers. Example, Satya gave an extremely good performance. You have the main adjective, good, and an adverb, extremely, that intensify the main adjective. Or the second one, education should make us tolerant of the faults of others. Tolerant is the main adjective 
followed by the complement of the faults of others, which is a prepositional phrase. Okay, now, um, the next kind of phrase is the verbal phrases. We have the participial. Oh, wait. A verb phrase is different from a verbal phrase because a verb phrase simply has the main verb plus, of course, the linking or the auxiliary or the helping verbs. Okay, but um, verbal phrases are different because it, the verb takes on another form and therefore another function. Like in this case, participial phrase, waited for her boyfriend. Waited is the past participle of the base form uh, of the verb wait. And here it functions as a predicate. Second one is a gerund phrase. Ver the, um, the verb ending in ing used as a noun. That's what a gerund is. So in this sentence, you have learning a new word every day is a good practice. Here, it functions your verbal phrase, specifically gerund phrase, functions as a subject. And lastly, you have the infinitive phrase where to is added before the present tense of verb and it may be used as noun, adjective, or adverb. In our example, the supervisor is here to inspect the project. So, to inspect the project functions here as an adverb describing the purpose. Lastly, we have the prepositional phrase. So it becomes a phrase if you have a preposition plus, of course, the object of the preposition. So what do they show? Relationship of time, place, position, direction, purpose, manner, among others. Okay, so we have different examples. The examination will be in the morning. Indicating time. He was beside the oblation, indicating place. He's going up the stairs, indicating direction. The little boy scampered down the escalator, direction as well. The hungry child broke into the big shop for bread. So you have a purpose. With quick expert movements, so indicating manner, um, the surgeon performed the operation. So these are the different kinds of fr phrases, and we'll see how they all figure out as we form the sentence. Of course, you're familiar with the parts of a sentence, which are the subject and the predicate. Subject, simply put, it's what's being talked about in your sentence, and predicate, anything an observation, perhaps, anything that tells something about your subject. Example in this sentence, a young and impressionable moth set his heart on a star. So what is being talked about? A young and impressionable moth that makes it your complete subject. And what is said about your subject? Set his heart on a star. That's why it's the predicate. So can you identify the subject and predicate in the following sentences? So, number one, if your answer is chasing stars, subject, correct, would not get you anywhere, anywhere, predicate. Second one, um, number two, the star, subject, came out every evening at dusk, predicate. Number three, all endings, that's your subject, and your predicate are also beginnings. Number four, great men, correct, that's the subject, and predicate is your make their influence felt universally number five what is the subject here a gray mist and your predicate appeared the word slowly and mysteriously is an adverbial modifier so knowing the parts of your sentence let's now go to the, the other sentence elements but because, because apart from the subject and predicate, you also have subject complement, the direct object, the indirect object, the object complement, and the adverbial modifiers. 
So the other elements of a sentence, um, apart from subject and predicate, oh wait, predicate, uh, the verbs are really important in determining the basic sentence pattern because they govern the verb that you use actually gov govern the, the intention of the sentence. So if it's a linking verb, you have to know if it's a linking verb or an action word. If it's a linking verb, then it describes the state of being or, or the condition of the subject. If it's an action word, then you can have two kinds of, of verb, the intransitive and the transitive. If it's intransitive, it does not require an object. And if it's transitive, of course, it requires a direct object to receive the action. So aside from that, okay, you have to be familiar with the object which um, comes in two, form, two forms, the direct and the indirect object. So it's very easy to tell the direct object. It's a noun or it's equivalent that receives the action. So how can you tell if um, the noun or the word receives the action? You simply pose the what or who question. Immediately after the verb, you, you ask what or who and if it requires an answer, the answer is actually your direct object. Therefore, making the verb transitive. Again, um, uh, the next one is the indirect object. This, this time, it answers the question to whom or for whom, referring to the action uh, indicated by the intransitive verb. Okay, the fourth element is the complement. Complements, actually, there are parts of predicate that are needed to complete the meaning of the verb and the subject. So we have two kinds. For example, your sentence is, uh, follows the SLVSC pattern. Then it requires the subject complement because it completes the meaning following um, the linking verb. The other one is the object complement. It's an adjective or noun after the direct object, which completes the meaning of your DO or the direct object. Finally, the fifth element is the adverbial modifier. Um, adverbial modifier, it functions as adjective and adverb that describe other words in a sentence. Why do we say they're generally optional? Because even without the adverbial modifier, the sentence can stand. However, what makes your writing particularly interesting is the presence of adverbial modifiers because they give additional information about the action such as time, place, manner, purpose, cause, condition, among others. And you can find them at the beginning of your sentence, in the middle, or even at the last part. So let's have a few examples. So when you're sentence takes uh, a transitive verb or even an intransitive verb either a transitive or intransitive um, and there's an adverbial modifier this may occur in three positions in the initial position example here from the window i could see the flags of all the nations waving so you have the subject i and the predicate could see the flags of all the nations waving and what modifies the subject position of the subject from the window so from the window since it modifies your subject it fu it functions as adverbial modifier and then it can also be found in the middle like here can you guess which one is our adverbial modifier take note it's an adverb or an adjective describing um certain elements of your sentence the government that's your subject and your predicate suspended so the adverb here is temporarily temporarily functions as adverbial modifier students here are trained to think analytically so what describes um the verb to think or the infinitive uh, phrase to think is analytically to think how in what manner analytically so it functions as adverbial modifier located at the final position. So let us now identify the different sentence elements in the following examples. So examine sentence number one. You have Mr. Young's beef bulgogi is sumptuous. Subject, Mr. Young. 
Mr. Young's beef bulgo bulgogi, sorry. And then, predicate is, it's a linking verb. And then finally, sumptuous, which functions as subject complement describing bulgogi, describing your subject. Therefore, it's SLVSC. So by identifying the different elements, you can now identify the basic sentence pattern. In number two, the show went on for hours. It's better if you identify the verb first so you'll know if it's linking or action. If it's an action word, it's either transitive or intransitive. Like for number two, the verb is went on. So do you think it's transitive or intransitive? So you can post went on who? Not appropriate. Went on what? Again, does not have an answer. Therefore, if you don't have an answer, there's no direct object. Therefore, the verb is intransitive. So you have subject, intransitive verb. So how about for hours? What is its function? For hours, functions as adverbial modifier here. And number three, he has just read my letter. So he, subject, has just read predicate, and my letter read what? My letter. The answer to the what or who question is, right, the direct object. So you have the direct object there. Number four, we gave ourselves, ourselves a treat. We subject, predicate is gave, gave what? A treat, a treat is your DO. To whom? Or for whom? Ourselves. Therefore, functioning as I-O or indirect object. Number five, everyone considers him the best candidate. Everyone is your subject, considers is your predicate, considers who? Him. Okay? So here, him is your direct object. And following the word him, you have a complement, something that describes modifies your DO. So if it modifies your DO or your object, it's called an object complement. Now, okay, can you do uh, these five? These were the earlier sentences we had. So I want you to answer, study, and um, check if your answers are correct by going back through the slides if you're still confused. Okay, for this part, try underlining up. Uh, no, try to identify what particular sentence element um, the underlined words fall into. Like the first one. Sentence number one. In time, the old woman grew quite fond of the stray cat. So identify the verb first. Grew. That's how you do it. Um, make sure... You identify the verb first. Grew. Grew. Is it linking or action word? Mm-hmm. So think hard. Does it express um state of being or a condition? Or does it express an action? So in this particular sentence, grew quite fond. You are trying to describe the state of being of the subject which is the who which is the old woman so if you can oh, this is a simple test if you can replace the verb with a linking verb then the verb might be or mo most probably is a linking verb it functions as a linking verb although grew or grow um, can also function as an action word so here, grew quite fond. So if it's a linking, fond, therefore functions as SC or subject complement. Number two, the store is calling their clearance sale a blockbuster. So we have a verb phrase, is calling, that's your predicate. Is it transitive or intransitive? Is calling what? The answer to the what question, their clearance sale. Therefore, their clearance sale is your DO. 
And what follows after a blockbuster? A blockbuster describing your DO. Therefore, blockbuster is an OC or object complement. Okay, number three, unpleasantly rancid. The beautiful, beautiful blossom of this plant smells. Again, smells. It may function as a linking verb and it is indeed a linking verb in this case because you can replace that with was. Was rancid or is because it's in present tense. Is rancid. Um, it doesn't talk about smelling as an action word. It talks about the state of being of the uh, subject. Therefore, this functions as SC. Number four, experiences like these will give people a new hope. Pick the verb again, will give. It's an action word, so ask yourself, is it transitive or intransitive? Will give what? New hope. So that's your DO. And then to whom or for whom? People. Therefore, people is your IO or indirect object. Now for number five, the suggestions from the union proved helpful. Proved. Action or linking. Can you replace it with a linking verb? The suggestions from the union were helpful. If you can, then prove here. The word proved functions as linking verb. Therefore, helpful is a subject complement. I hope that's clear. So, if you need or if you want further explanation, you may read the handout posted in our WordPress site. So, you just download the word file on adverbial modifier and sentence elements. So, knowing all these elements, we can now play. Play around with all these sentence parts, phrases, clauses, and use them to form the different um, sentence varieties. And a requirement is you have to know the five basic sentence patterns, which are SIV, SLV, SC, STVDO, SDVIODO, and STVDOOC. So let's have the first one. Subject intransitive verb. Like in our example, the hero travels. Intransitive verb doesn't require an object. A receiver so you just have um, the doer an actor or your topic and uh, acts or event or what was done so heroes triumph that's it more examples huge waves dashed against the, sh the seashore so you have dash does it require an object you just have against the seashore this is a prepositional phrase functioning as adverbial modifier the next one, the package will arrive next week. The package um, subject will arrive in transitive verb next week, adverbial modifier indicating time. Here, in the, la in the next two sentences, you have expletives. You use it and there. There is no one singing. So what is the subject? It's not there. What is being talked about in the sentence? no one okay therefore your subject is no one you can actually transform this into no one is singing so no one is your subject and then is singing your intransitive verb same case with the fourth sentence it is expected that his appointment is confirmed confirmed so um because um it and there are actually empty statements but uh, you use them for, um, of course, sentence variety, variety in your sentence writing. But be careful when you use them because they make your sentences unnecessarily long. However, they're very effective as well if you want to emphasize something. So, example here, it is expected that this appointment is confirmed. So, your subject is what is being talked about. The fact that his appointment is confirmed. So, that's your subject. And what's your verb? Is expected. Therefore, making it an intransitive verb because no direct object or receiver is needed to complete um, the thought. 
So the examples I gave you are quite easy. Let's have a level up of examples because you might be surprised once you see all the complements, all the adverbial modifiers in one sentence, it might be confusing or difficult for you to identify the, the core or the kernel sentence. But we'll walk, through, uh, we'll walk you through it. Like in this sentence, um, this is SIV as well. Great ability without discretion frequently ends tragically. Okay, do not be um, intimidated by all the words. words. You simply start with a verb, okay? Find the verb. What's the verb? Ends, okay. Ends, is it transitive or intransitive? So you pick the verb, ends what? No answer. Ends who? No answer. Therefore, no object. Therefore, this is intransitive verb. So your subject, great ability without discretion. Frequently, adverb modifying your predicate. Okay. Next one. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. So your subject here is fools. Predicate rush in. Rush in what? Rush in who? No answer. Therefore, this is an intransitive verb. Another one, environmental conditions often vary geographically in a more or less regular manner. So you have to be on the lookout for the verb. Where's the verb? Vary. Okay, vary. Transitive or intransitive? Vary. It doesn't require a receiver, so it's intransitive. Okay, so if that's easy, uh, let's proceed to SLVSC. Subject linking verb, subject complement. So a very simple example, he is funny. So he, subject linking verb is Subject complement funny. Anything that describes, modifies, completes, renames your subject is a complement. Okay, so we need to be reminded of the different linking verbs like am, is, was, where, will be, shall be, has been, have been, and the verbs of the senses like taste, sound, feel, hear, appear, grow, look, remain, seem, Turn. Okay, these verbs do not always express action. That's why you have to check if they indicate a state of being. If they do, then they function as linking verbs. So do the simple test of trying to replace these verbs with the linking. And if the sentence still makes sense, um, then it follows the SLV. SC pattern. So become, grow, turn, seem, appear, look, remain, stay. So kindly read the examples. Continue, feel, smell, taste, sound, prove, wear. Okay? So case in point, you have where her patience is wearing thin. Is wearing. You have um, a verb phrase here, is wearing. But ask yourself, does it describe an action? Is there an action going on? None. If you imagine her patience is wearing thin, you are describing... The state or be of being or the condition of her patience. Therefore, it's a linking verb. Because you can tell, like, let's use it, uh, let's, let's have another um, sentence. For example, um, Lloyd is wearing a blue shirt today. Is wearing, in that example... Is an action right it doesn't modify like blue doesn't modify or complement Lloyd your subject instead 
is wearing indicates the action done by your subject. Okay, so more examples. Mm -hmm. Many people were homeless, the motor went dead, the girl seemed smart, roads and bridges became impassable. Okay, so if you notice in the first group, homeless, dead, smart, impassable, these are adjectives because your subject complement can either be adjectives or nouns like in the next batch the problem is the weather the weather is a noun complementing the problem which is basically the same as the problem the tennis player turned turned champion champion is also a noun the source of fund is also a noun doctors also a noun so you call this if if it's uh, an adjective functioning as sc you call this um, predicate adjective and noun you have predicate noun and let's again level up the examples this one national heroes day in the philippines subject is that's your linking verb a national public holiday so this one is an sc particularly a predicate noun next these heroes are the men and women in philippine history whose acts of courage enabled the philippines to grow as a nation so after reading it you might be confused which word is really the verb is it are is it enabled is it grow so if you cannot tell in the first place what is the main verb then you will be really confused in um, structuring your your sentence patterns so think about the verb the subject and the predicate first so what's being talked about these heroes okay and then what is said about these heroes are they, that they are the men and women in Philippine history whose acts of courage enabled the Philippines to grow as a nation. So therefore, enabled is not the verb because it, it is not um, the action being done directly by your subject. Grow is also not it. It's are. are. So you, read, you identify now that the sentence follows the subject. This is the subject the linking verb are and the rest of the sentence that's your subject complement specifically predicate noun okay next the big room remained unused for years since no one wanted to sleep in a room where someone was killed subject the big room linking verb remained and then subject complement unused specifically a predicate adjective so in identifying the sentence patterns you mainly focus on the core or the kernel sentence if you have a dependent clause like in this case since no one wanted to sleep in a room where someone was killed it functions as a dependent clause and you can take that entire dependent clause to function as adverbial modifier describing the reason the reason why the room remained unused for years so that entire chunk is your adverbial modifier that means your adverbial modifier can be a single word it can be a phrase or it can be an entire clause okay let's proceed to stvdo we know that stands for subject transitive verb and direct objects very simple example i drink coffee drink what coffee that's your receiver other examples i met the president met who the president Lulum wrote the novel wrote what the novel so tr if if the verb is transitive this is also um the inactive voice which means one simple check is the if the verb is transitive is if you can transform the sentence into its passive voice 
because in the passive voice, the DO or the direct object will become the subject in the passive. Okay, for example, I met the president. If you transform this into passive, the president was met by me. Although it doesn't sound good. Okay, that's why active construction is better here. But in the second one, you can actually transform it. Ludlum wrote the novel. The novel was written by Ludlum. Okay, so that's one another check. Apart from asking the who or what, you can also try transforming the sentence into passive form. If you can, then that means the verb is transitive. So let's level up our examples. This one. Sometimes people wonder whether life is worth living at all. So first um, order of business find the verb find the predicate is it wonder is it the linking verb is okay so if your answer is wonder then you are correct wonder what whether life is worth living at all so that phrase is your do. Sometimes, can you guess what um, its function is? Yeah, adverbial modifier. Next one, the elections will decide whether or not the present policies will continue and whether or not the present government has met public approval. Wow, that's a mouthful. Okay, but again, do not get intimidated. Try to find the verb what is being talked about elections the elections a subject and a predicate will decide so post the who, who or what question will decide what whether or not okay that entire um phrase or clause is your do and it I hope it doesn't cause any uh, confusion. And a third uh, sentence, the scientific commission will try to find out exactly why dinosaurs suddenly disappeared from Earth some 70 to 80 million years ago. Subject, the scientific commission. Predicate, will try to find out. Okay? You do not stop at will try because it's one, it's part. To find out is also... Um, Ah, no, 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 no. We'll try. Yeah, that's your verb. And then we'll try what? To find out exactly why dinosaurs suddenly disappeared from Earth some 70 to 80 million years ago. Okay. Okay, next is S-T-V-I-O-D-O. -O. An example is the dog brought his master the stick. So your D-O is the answer to the who or what, again, and your I-O is the answer to the um, question to whom or for whom. So you have the dog subject, TV um, brought, I O his master and D O the stick. Other examples, read through them. Example, the official gave the relief workers ample support. 
Notice the verb used. Uh, most of the time, uh, these verbs are used. Promised, offered, gave, send. Because the, these uh, verbs mean, uh, the use of these verbs mean, uh, means you need a recipient. Okay, apart from the receiver, you need a person or a noun functioning as recipient. And that's the IO. So let's have more um, complex examples. Men of goodwill bear no one any malice. Subject men of goodwill, transitive verb bear, bear what? Malice, any malice, um, to whom? To no one. Next one, millions of men and women who were shocked by the typhoon's impact Oh, I forgot to place the apostrophe again. So kindly place it here. Typhoons, possessive form, so apostrophe S. Typhoons impact sent the victims parcels of food and clothing. So what is your IODO? IO, the victims. And uh, DO, parcels of food and clothing. Here, the self styled clairvoyant warned whom. Whoever cared to listen to him, that the world was coming to an end. Again, pick the verb. Warned. Very good. Subject is clairvoyant, of course. And then pick the DO. Warned. What? That the world was coming to an end. So that's your DO. Warned, um, uh, to whom? To whom did he give the warning? To whoever cared to listen. So you see, even if the elements are an entire, um, is composed of a phrase or even a clause, it's easy to identify the sentence pattern if you know the basics. Number five, STVDOOC. So a simple example, the event made me happy. Made who? Me. And then what describes me or DO? Happy. So if you try, if you try converting this to a passive or transforming this to passive voice, made who? Me. So me being the DO will now become the subject in the passive voice. So I... And your verb will become was made happy by the event. Okay, your OC complements still complements. It has it has to be near um, your subject because it's a complement. So I was made happy by the event. Oops. Leo calls his dog Kiara. Kiara complements. Actually, it's similar to your DO, his dog. It can be, it can rename your DO. So, STVDOOC. Specifically, um, a predicate. Oh, no, no, an OC, which is a noun. STVDOOC adjective. You have James believes Kimbop to be the best. So, the best adjective modifying your DO, Kimbop. So let's level up the examples again. Most of the critics who attended the play thought her performance disappointing. Oh wait, you have to pick the subject. Most of the critics who attended the play. That's an that's your the entire clause is is your subject, and then predicate thought thought. What? It's not thought who. Thought who is uh, the answer is just her, and it's incomplete. But if you say, but if you ask thought what her performance, because the word her performance or the phrase her performance is your do, and what complements your do? What kind of performance was, was um 
being described disappointing so disappointing is an adjective functioning as oc another example the jury considered them guilty even though the trial had hardly begun subject is the jury considered is an action word specifically transitive considered who them them is your do and what describes them or complements them guilty even though the trial had hardly begun next the president declared the week of the elections public holidays to enable voters to go to their hometowns and vote so notice the sentences are so expanded but if you break down the elements or the sentence elements you will find that it follows all these sentences follow a basic sentence patterns like here um your transitive verb is declare declared what the week of the elections public holidays okay the week of the elections as your do and what complements the week of the elections um public holidays to describe okay uh, the week of the elections to describe your do so this one public holidays enable voters uh etc actually the word public holidays that's your oc and then um the function of the next the infinitive phrase to enable voters to go to their hometowns and vote is again an adverbial modifier appearing in the final position what is its function um to describe the reason or the cause okay of the declaration so therefore it still modifies your verb declared so even if you omit that phrase that verbial modifier the sentence will stand you will simply say the president declared the week of the elections public holidays period it's complete in itself okay so that's what um adverbial modifiers do they um, expand complement um if you want to state the reason the time the manner the place you can put the adverbial modifiers wherever you deem um where you where you see them fit may it be in the initial medial or final positions so so what are the five sentence patterns again SIV, SLVSC, and you have three other sentence patterns that use the transitive verb, namely STVDO, STVIODO, and STVDOOC. So if that's clear, let's have this short diagnostic. You will simply identify the basic sentence patterns. And I got these from famous movie lines or quotations from famous movie lines let's start with i am groot from guardians of the galaxy so if your answer is this is so easy subject linking verb and a noun this one is a proper noun proper noun functioning as subject complement i and groot are the same so you have slvsc number two Oh, this is from the silence of the lambs this give gave me the creeps when i uh, watched it uh, years ago anthony hopkins was really great and jody foster of course so the lines i ate this liver with some fab beans and a, and a nice shianti is that how you pronounce it it's a kind of wine okay so i subject eat um what is that eight transitive verb very good eight what his liver oh my okay quotable quote uh, movie quotes number three carpet diem seize the day boys make your lives extraordinary this is from dead poet society one of my favorite films as well um in modern day you say yolo right so seize the day seize what the day you have s t v d o and then boys you the people uh the persons being uh talked to by the speaker that's your implied subject you you seize the day 
make your lives extraordinary you make your lives extraordinary so you is your implied subject and then your transitive verb is make and then your do your lives and then extraordinary your oc so in the second sentence or in the third sentence you have stvdo oc number four from the movie psycho a boy's best friend is his mother so kindly identify very good it's s l v s c next one if you build it it will come this is a complex sentence if you build it that's your dependent clause but when you identify the sentence pattern just focus on the main clause he will come so please identify very good s i v he subject welcome intransitive verb do you want more so if you want more let's see next slide oh gladiator um i, I still remember how who's that actor russell crowe delivered this very emphatically so you have my name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix legions, and loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. How? Okay, so let's break this down. My name, subject, is linking verb and the phrase following it that's your sc so the first sentence is simply slvsc how about the second sentence and i will have my vengeance in this life or the next i is your subject will have is it an action word or is it a linking verb? Because it's composed of a linking plus auxiliary. But think, is there an action going on? Or is, is it just state of being? I will have. Will have. It's as if you're saying, I will take. If you have have, take. So I take my vengeance. And my vengeance, so if you have that, I, subject, will have, transitive verb will have what my vengeance that's your do in this life for the next that's your adverbial modifier because if you transform this to passive you can say my vengeance will be had by me although it doesn't sound good okay if it's transformable meaning it can be transformed into passive then it is a transitive verb okay number two man who catch fly with chopstick accomplish anything from the karate kid the original of uh, the first movie not the one with um will smith's son Jaden smith is that his name the first one so mr miyagi said man who catch fly with chopstick accomplish anything so clearly that is what's your guess S T V D O anything that's your D O. So if you transform anything is accomplished by a man who catch fly or who catches fly with chopstick. Number three, Louis. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I subject think predicate action yeah transitive or intransitive think what you have an answer therefore this is stv do life is a box of chocolates from forrest gump so the first sentence is obviously slvsc 
How about the second sentence? You never know what you're gonna get. You, subject, never know, transitive verb, never know what, what you're gonna get. That's your DO. So, STBDO. And from Saw. I never liked watching this movie, so... Let's just identify the sentence matter. I want to play a game. I, subject, um, want, transitive verb, want what, to play a game. So, STVDO as well. Oh, okay. I think one more set and we're good. We can do the deepening in our um, lecture class next time we meet. Okay. Last one. I'm shutting my eyes tight so everything goes black. I subject, what's a predicate? Am shutting, shut, I'm shutting what? My eyes, S-T-V-D-O. And what is the function of the next um, words or phrase? Tight, complements, eyes. Therefore, this is S-T-V-D-O, O-C. Number two, from Notting Hill. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. <laughs> okay, so I, that's our subject. Am, predicate, also just a girl. So modifying I, therefore this is S-L-V-S-C. Your subject complement, a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. That's your um, predicate noun. Number three, mm, from Taken. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a long, very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Ooh, scary. <laughs> so, first clause. I, subject, can tell, can tell what? Oh, no, no. Can tell what? I don't have money. The fact that I don't have money. To whom? To you. So, this first sentence is S-T-V-I-O-D-O. -O. Next one. What I do have are a very particular set of skills. What I do ha have, subject, predicate, are a very particular set of skills, subject, complement. So this is SLVSC. So if you have third sentence, I have skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. So subject, skills. Predicate that make that make who me okay me so that's your do and what describes or complements me a nightmare so S T V D O O C because a nightmare describes or complements your do. Number four, I see dead people. Ah, very easy. S-T-V-D-O. Dead people are seen by me. So, if in passive, you say it that way. Number five, this is from, I saved the best for last. This is my from my favorite, most favorite film, The Godfather. So, Don Corleone. Marlon Brando said this famous lines. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. So please give me an answer that I cannot refuse as well because it's correct.
So with that, uh, thank you so much to all these references. Without these references, I will not be able to compile, collate, and uh, make sense of all the data or all the information presented here. And finally, for your homework, I want you to download the word file, week three practice sheet, and um, print it out. And then you write your answer by hand. Of course, do not forget your name, recitation section, etc. And submit your work in our next class. And don't forget, we will be celebrating National Heroes Day. So you come in your white top and red handkerchief or red bandana. So cheers, everyone. We'll talk about how to make use of all these sentence elements, phrases, modifiers, um, compliments in order to come up with um, more creative sentences. Again, the point of sentence writing, they should not only be grammatical, especially if you're already a college student, it, they have to be rhetorical as well. See, rhetorical, effective in persuading, in convincing, in transmitting information, whatever purpose you have in communicating. So there, goodbye.